Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, if we could uh, just everybody get comfortable. If you brought a sweater, it might be a little bit warm, or a winter jacket. Uh, if you want you uh, to join us in our celebration of our Easter Mass, it's, uh, even though we just come out of Easter weekend, uh, we're still celebrating uh, the, what I think is the most important Mass of the year. Uh, welcome Canadian Martyrs. Obviously, welcome Our Lady of Fatima. Just a, a couple of things before, I'll just say now since I've got everyone's attention, uh, Our Lady of Fatima, I'd like us to stay back at the, at the end of Mass. We'll let Canadian Martyrs, because they're a much bigger school, and more buses, we'll let them depart first, and we'll catch our buses on the way back. So, boys and girls, uh, if you want to put your kneelers down now, that way we're not thumping them during church. Okay. And like I always say to my students, uh, I encourage everybody, look to your left, look to your right, look behind you. You're not going to miss anything, so let's give Father a complete and devoted attention during our Easter Mass. Rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be always with you. Happy Easter, boys and girls. We all know we celebrated Easter on Sunday but in actual fact, the church celebrates Easter not for one day, but for 50 days. So important is this celebration. Because at Easter time, what we're celebrating is Christ's victory over sin, suffering, and death. As we all know, Christ rose in triumph from the grave on that first Easter Sunday. And the good news for you and for me is that through our baptism, we participate in that victory. So no longer is sin, suffering, and death the last word in a Christian's life. The last word is eternal life, which we share with our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us first of all pause and call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life and the spirit. Lord, have mercy. 
you bring pardon and peace to the sinner, Christ of mercy. You bring light to those in darkness and the shadow of death, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We now have our first reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostle. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at three o'clock in the afternoon, and a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate so that he could ask for alms for those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, look at us. And the man fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from Jesus or from, uh, 
them. Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but I have what I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. Immediately, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong, jumping up, the man, uh, leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement as what happened to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, 
two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about 11 kilometers from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And Jesus said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? Jesus asked him, What things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the sacred scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So they went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized Jesus, and he vanished from their sight. The two disciples each said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they get up, and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. These were saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then the two disciples told what had happened on the road and how the Lord had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. It's not easy to imagine the tremendous joy that the early disciples of Jesus experienced on that very first Easter Sunday. The following story might, might help just a little bit. There was a Ukrainian man who had two sons in the First World War. Their names were Peter and Gregory. One day the father got a letter from the war front. Being unable to read, he handed the letter to his daughter and asked her to read it. It was from Gregory's commanding officer. And the letter began like this. I regret to inform you that your son Gregory 
was killed in action on July 10th. Gregory was an excellent soldier and died the death of a brave man. You have every reason to be proud of your son. Now, needless to say, the effect of this news on his father was immediate and alarming. He seemed to wilt visibly. In a matter of days, he aged, his hair turning gray almost overnight. His memory began to fail. He was absolutely devastated. He kept the letter under a holy picture of Jesus in the kitchen. Each day he would take it down and his daughter would read it to him one more time. But as soon as she began, I regret to inform you, he would take the letter from her and put it away again. After the local priest had said mass for Gregory, he began to feel just a little bit better, but only just a little. 12 days went by like this. On the 13th day, a second letter arrived from the war front. It contained a fantastic piece of good news. Gregory wasn't dead after all. He had been wounded and left for dead on the battlefield. The next morning, he had come to and crawled four miles back to his own lines, dragging a wounded soldier with him. He was raised to the rank of corporal, and he had been awarded the cross of St. Gregory in recognition for his bravery. Right now, he was recovering from his wounds in the hospital, and they could expect a visit from him very, very shortly. Once again, the effect on his dad was immediate, except this time it was for the better. He was a new man. He was overcome with joy. He grabbed the letter and went to the local village. He stopped everyone he met, telling them the good news. My son is alive, and he has been awarded the cross of St. Gregory for bravery. Now, boys and girls, this should give us just some idea of the joy that the disciples of Jesus experienced on that very first Easter morning. The man's son hadn't actually died, but Jesus did die. They had witnessed his death with their own eyes, and now the tomb was empty, and Jesus was seen alive. Naturally, there was some confusion as the news spread. Nothing like this had ever happened before. At first, they were puzzled. Like St. Thomas, they doubted and refused to believe, but slowly it sank in. Not, however, until each of them had experienced for themselves an encounter with the risen Christ. Then they were overcome with joy. Jesus, their leader and friend, had broken the chains of death to the power of his Father. Death, the last and great enemy, had been overcome. Boys and girls, the joy of the apostles is meant for each one of us as well. For Jesus' victory over sin, suffering, death is a victory that he shares with each one of us. He stands in our midst as our risen Lord, giving us all the strength we need to live in this world and to make it a better place. And we make this world a better place when life is chosen over death, when sin is forgiven and forgotten, where the making of peace is more important than the making of war where new beginnings are always possible despite the mistakes of the past, where we respect every person and help the one in need to live a better life, where we model our lives on Jesus,
who brought light where there was darkness, hope where there was despair, strength where there was weakness, courage where there was fear, and faith where there was doubt, and life where there was death. May each of us bring the light of the risen Christ to the darkness of our world. Today, we rejoice as believing Christians in the resurrection of our Savior. Christ is risen. He is truly risen. Alleluia, alleluia. Please stand. In faith, let us place our petitions before our Heavenly Father. Our response to each petition, Lord, hear our prayer. For religious leaders, that they may continue to bring Christ, the light of the world, to all whom they serve, we pray to the Lord that we as a nation may respect the sacredness of human life at every stage of its existence and never endanger it through any action of ours. We pray to the Lord that those baptized into the faith may really believe God's message of salvation and allow it to grow through prayer and service. We pray for all children, especially the students, of Canadian martyrs and Our Lady of Fatima School, that their friendship with Jesus may keep them close to him at all times. We pray to the Lord for our loved ones who have passed away through suffering to death, that the glory of the resurrection may be their lasting joy. We pray to the Lord and together let us pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Please be seated. I now invite those bringing the gifts to, bringing the gifts to please bring them forward. Mighty Father, we see, we pray, O oh Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body 
through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gerard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, 
Saint Alfred and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. stand now and at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. going to ask the grade two students, grade one students, senior kindergarten, 
junior kindergarten to please stand. Grade two, grade one, junior kindergarten, senior kindergarten, please stand. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your son Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not stop them. Lord Jesus, we pray that you embrace each one of these children with your tender love. We pray that they come to know you better and come to love you more. We pray that you protect them from all evil and keep them safe from all harm. And we bless them in your name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated, boys and girls. During the reception of It's just a reminder about the reception of Holy Communion. Myself or the Eucharistic minister will say the body of Christ, and your response is amen. You consume the host immediately in front of the Eucharistic minister. Then you return to your seat for a time of quiet prayer. For those who are not Catholic, please come forward with your arms crossed to receive a blessing. Okay, so both of you will take this side here. Both of you will take this side. Yes. 
Place it in your mouth.
Let us pray. We hear, O oh Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Before our final hymn, I would like to thank Mr. Inamorati for leading us in song today. Thank you very much, Mark.
All right, if everyone, everyone could just uh, have a seat for a moment. We just have a few thank yous. I would just like to uh, thank Father Hugh for uh, celebrating with us during this uh, Easter season. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, we'd like to uh, thank both th the students from both schools for being on your best behavior and um, listening to the Mass. Um, I'd like to th thank Mr. Dejanes, Mrs. Incavelia, and all the staff here today. And um, let's pre prepare ourselves to exit the church and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.